Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming to this talk today. And we're very, very honoured to have three of our artists that have created this incredible work here today. Their names are Lemba Toki, Bale Gione, and Robin White. And rather than tell you a little bit about what their where they've exhibited or what they do, we wanted to really just talk about their collaborative process, their collaboration, because that's what's enabled this incredible work. But before we do that, I really have to tell you a story that's, I think, really important um, in terms of this work's involvement in the APT and as part of the Pacific Selection. When I had the honour to go and meet Lemba in Lautoka in Fiji, we sat down and we talked about how this work was going and it, it, had, it had just started, hadn't it, Lemba? It was really, really just at the initial stages and I remember that Lemba said to me, you know Maud, I've planted taro in Haifa, Israel, Israel. And at the time I was so, wow, that the idea, the metaphor of having planted something as important as taro, the staple in, in Pacific life, in a place so charged by religion and by history like um, Israel in Haifa, I, was, I remember I was really moved and I was thinking that's incredible how the connections and how people are traveling and um, how motifs are appearing in different places and also how things are being planted into the earth. So I wrote that as the start of my catalog piece. And then in conversation, I couldn't get a hold of Lemba, but I spoke to Robin and I said, you know, Robin, I've started with that wonderful metaphor about planting taro in Israel. And Robin said, oh no, you've completely misunderstood that. What we mean is that every time that we work on this bark cloth, we are planting. So that every time that we're using the template and pushing the ink through the template and into the porous surface of the bark cloth, it was like planting. So every single motif on there is planting. And you can see the richness of that metaphor and hence also the name of it. Um, re referencing gardens. So I thought for me it was a real lesson in terms of not being too narrow and seeing things a little bit wider. So our conversation and my understanding of this work started with a good lesson for me. So we'll continue. And um, I wanted to firstly ask you, um, Lemba, if you'd like to talk a little bit about this incredible collaboration that you've had between the three of you. Thank you, Maud. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm Lambert Toki from Fiji, and we always say Bula Vinaka to all our friends here. Bula Vinaka. And uh, before I'm doing a talking to about our collaboration with our two friends, it's a big, really, really learning to me to work together with, uh, with the friends. And uh, it's a big learning to me to giving ideas, giving, um, you, you sharing your ideas to another people. So it's a big, uh, big learning to me to work, working together with some, some else, some other else. Thank you. Mm. Do you want to talk a little bit about, I mean, you and Robin have collaborated in the past, so this is your second collaboration together, and you've worked on a Masi project before. Would you like to talk a little bit about how this project was different and what you might have carried in terms of your collaborative processes into this beautiful piece and how, you know, you've brought in ballet as well, so how that might happen? I don't know who wants to answer that. Yes, thank you. Before we... Before we meet with uh, Robin, we were, you know, it's very hard to us to know each other because we come in a different uh, culture. She came in uh, in uh, Palangi ways, and I'm coming in the in the Pacific ways. You know, like in uh, in the Pacific, we are very easy to eat something like cassava, <laughs> dalo, kumala, and uh, fish, but. When I work together with another culture, it's a big learning to her and to me too. We are, you know, we are learning each other from, from our culture. And when we work, 
the first, the first time when we do our artwork on the 2000. And we, and we start uh, working together on that time. We, we have uh, three pieces of tapa and uh, we go to Canberra for our exhibition on that time. This is the second time for us to do our exhibition. Thank you. Thank you. And can you talk a little bit, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different ideas in this beautiful piece. There's a lot of things that you address. Um, would you like to talk, maybe start with the idea, I remember when you, we initially spoke, Robin, you wanted to do something about sugar because of its sweetness, but a sweetness that didn't correspond to its history in Fiji. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, okay. Um, can I stand? I'm so sort of used to st standing when I talk. Um, it was uh, it was really fortuitous to get uh, a communication from from Ward um, because at that time I'd been starting to talk about the possibility of working again with Lemba. So the invitation to to prepare a proposal uh, for for the APT was just wonderful timing. So um, I was uh, passing through Fiji, as I often do, because I keep coming and going to Kiribati, where I lived for 17 years. Um, so actually, uh, just going back a little to what Limba was saying before, I'm actually a Pacific Islander more than a Palangi, <laughs> in case you're wondering about that. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I eat kumala. I'm brought up on it, in fact. <laughs> but anyway, uh, coming and going, we'd been talking about doing some more work. So. I had a stop over in Fiji, we, we discussed some ideas, we started building up this concept and uh, presented, presented it to, to, the, um, to the gallery here and it was accepted. Um, but it, it was, um, you know, we had to have a starting point and Lautoko, where Lemba lives, <coughs> is the site of the largest sugar factory. And uh, so we were looking at that and uh, looking at the, the role of sugar um, both in the history of Fiji, but also just in the, in the, within the family, and using it as a metaphor for um, that idea of sweetness and human relationships within the family and beyond the family, within the community and beyond the community on a nationwide basis. Uh, especially given the current situation in Fiji, which you, you I, I mean, you hear all sorts of things from, from where you are in Australia and in New Zealand. But, you know, Fiji is an extraordinary place uh, with wonderful, wonderful opportunities for, um, for creating a model of a harmonious society where, where the people of the Pacific and of, of Asia live together and share a lot in common. Until you go to Fiji, you don't realise just how much Asian culture and indigenous Fijian culture have overlapped and fed into each other in all sorts of ways, in terms of the food, the way in which people decorate themselves, uh, just in their daily activity. It's, it's just an amazing place. It's a wonderful and unique environment. And uh, we wanted to talk about that in very positive terms. So we were taking this idea of sugar as representing, you know, the sweetness, the love, the, the attraction of, of a society where people live in, with mutual respect, mutual um, trust for each other. But then we needed um, some kind of, is it okay for me to carry on at this point? <laughs> some kind of framework to hang it on. And uh, you know, Lautok is known as Sugar City, by the way. So we started thinking of Sugar City and then the idea of city struck my mind. And I was thinking of some of the the metaphors within the, um, the scriptures of, of the Baha'i faith where the city of God is, a, is also a metaphor. And uh, then this led to us thinking of, in terms of a, a, a visual framework in which to carry our, our ideas, to actually use the terraced gardens on Mount Carmel in Haifa as the, as a, li a literal place, which we could then um, um, uh, plant our ideas on it, as it were, as, as Lemba had said before. 
And so what you see in this, in this large tapa here is actually a rendition of the, the very, very beautiful terraced gardens, which incidentally are now a uh, World Heritage Site on Mount Carmel in Haifa. And, um, but we've taken ourselves there and the people of, the, of Fiji through taking the four sugar factories, there are actually four sugar factories in Fiji, and planting the sugar cane at the base of Mount Carmel, and as um, Lemba said, uh, planting taro on the terraces of Mount Carmel, which is in a sense is asserting our presence in this place. And that is a place where, which is open to all people. Um, it's a public site, and when you go there, you see people from all over Israel as well as all over the world walking up and down those terraces. The wild animals that, that are there, that are preserved there, and the building in the middle is actually a shrine. Uh, it's a holy place for Baha'is and uh, a place of pilgrimage. So to represent that concept of pilgrimage, we used a Christian symbol, which is the shell, the uh, clam shell, as you, you see there. Um, the, the work also embodies Baha'i concepts of the balance between the material world and the spiritual world, hence the, uh, that, that suggestion of work and industry alongside uh, a place of worship. Um, I, w I don't want to talk too much because you want to hear from these ladies, but I, I'll just give, carry on just to give a basic background to it if you like. So what you're seeing here are two uh, uh, pieces which are part of, a, of an installation. Not all of the pieces that we produce are actually here on display. They're in the collection, but they're not here. What we produce were all of the things that you would uh, make for a traditional Fijian wedding. But in this case, instead of looking at a marriage of two individual human beings, we were exploring the idea of a marriage of cultures, okay? Of a coming together of cultures in a, in a, in a condition of harmony and Mutual, mutual love, namely in, in the Fijian context, uh, Indo-Fijian and um, indigenous Fijian. Even things like uh, the size of this large piece, which is known as Taunamu, is 12 feet by 8 feet, um, was determined by things, uh, historical elements, uh, such as the indentured Indian laborers, when they arrived in Fiji, were assigned a room two to a room, the room was 12 feet by eight feet. Their whole life had to be in that room, everything they owned, the children that they had, uh, that was it. In this case, we've, we've placed these elements within that uh, size, saying this is a place where there is room for all. Um, on, the, on the pedestal part here, you see um, a woven, pandanus mat uh, with a, an embroidered woolen border which incorporates um, uh, the, the um, lotus which is significant Hindu um, symbolism um, denoting the connection between the, the physical and the spiritual worlds. Uh, on top of that is a, is a piece of tapa which has been decorated by us and on top of that, there are these rag mats. And I'd just like to let you know that Maud has given us permission. One of, one of the people here has, has suggested that since we are the makers of this, we, we may be allowed to actually lift the mats so you can see what's underneath them. But you have to be good and wait until the end. And then all shall be revealed. Okay. <laughs> These rag mats, um, Limba has neighbours who are uh, Indo-Fijian and have been long-standing friends of her and her family. Um, their children grew up together, and Limba's children, older, older daughter speaks Hindi, for example. Um, anyway, the, the matriarch of that family would sit every day at her treadle machine on the little porch outside the corrugated iron house that remarkably housed all these people. I, goodness knows how they all fitted in there, but it was absolutely immaculate inside. And outside, Dimitri would sit at her treadle machine every day making rag mats, uh, which she sold at $3 each. And a lot of Indian women do this. 
and they augment their very meager living by doing this work. We decided to honour that work, the, you know, the, the nobility of that effort through making these mats, uh, which include masi, which is the Fijian word for tapa, and the, the silks and cottons that are used for, for sari material. And uh, of course there's something underneath there that you'll see later. Mm, there's so much we could talk about here, but I've perhaps said too much already. Can I hand on to... You haven't heard from Bali yet. B Bali, is there something you'd like to say? Because otherwise I think if you... There's something that probably would interest everyone is that this very large piece of bark cloth, I'm sure that no one can really imagine where it comes from, like the process of getting such a work, which is really what you're so well known for in Fiji, is that you make incredible masi. You don't have to answer that, you can, but it's a little... Uh, thank you. I, I really don't know what to say, because they all say what, they, what, what is they're supposed to... What about the, do you want to talk about the process, you know, what the tree, how big the tree is and what you do to get it to that state? About the Masi? About the Masi. Okay, thank you. Uh, between the, the pineapple, uh, pineapple, it's a top of their Masi. Yes, we call it Masi. So, we have to cut it out from the bottom of the tree, then uh, we have to take this, uh, the, what, the um, skin out and we start beating. It takes a long time for us to do the beating for the tapa. It's very hard. It takes three or four days to beat the tapa, to put in the bucket or something. So, and later on we can do, we can start beating the tapa. Uh, it's a bit hard work. <laughs> and it takes time for us to, to join the tapa together as one. One big tapa like this, take two or three pieces to make this, uh, so we can work on it. And Bali, the tree is about so big, huh? The, it's smaller. So it's as narrow as this mic. And then you have to peel that off and you beat it and beat it till you get the yeah. certain thickness and then you have to get more. So it's, to uh, get that size, as you're saying, is absolutely yeah, it, incredible. And the finesse and the evenness, huh? It takes a year, so we can grow it up, so mm. and then cut it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you talk a little bit, um, since from that first story that where I misunderstood what you meant about planting, can you talk a little bit about the process of, of stenciling and what, how that has maybe changed in Fiji, like in the past, what was used to make bark cloth patterns and now what you might use and, and the process that you used for this? We can use it for so, so many things, yes. like decoration, uh, uh, wedding, and uh, also use it when somebody, one of our families died. Uh, so many things we use, tapa, especially in Fiji. Did you want to talk a little bit about the patterning on, on this Taunamu? There's some things that you've introduced yourself to tell your narrative so that you've got the Lotoka sugar mills, you've got the Haifa gardens where you've planted taro and you've got the Kumara on the bottom one. Do you want to talk about the border around the Taunamu or some of the... I remember, Robin, that you sent through a document of some of the actual designs that had been carried through because this is... A, a practice that's been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. So what is some of the, con the continuity that occurs in this Taunamu? Uh, first of all, uh, like uh, we too, we come from where we made tapa. Uh, the border of the tapa, the, we always uh, put the, we call it Sewangani. That's right on the border of the tapa, right around. And also this again, and some of uh, this, it's new to us because uh, uh, in our custom way or in our culture, we don't use this. Uh, some of uh, uh, some of the pictures, it's it's written here. So because we are working together with uh, my friend, my sister here, Robin, and we made a lot of things. You know, it's so new to us. Mm -mm. 
Did you want to say something? No, we broke the rules. You broke the rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. You know, we girls, we call us girls every day. We are not call us lady or old ladies. We are call us <laughs> girls every day. Because we look young when we do our work. We are happy to do <laughs> So, uh, friends, the name of our, our work is Tei Tei Ho, it means a new garden. You know, in our garden, you'll, in our garden, you'll see a, a new thing there. We plant a new thing here, like a dog, a wild dog there, <laughs> birds, um, sugar cane, pineapple. That's the new things we put in our in our new garden. It's a meaning to the to us to do a, a new things here. I think on that metaphor of garden and of new things and of growth and collaboration and on the girls part, I think we should probably end there.